What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make materials in Cinema 4D. I'm going to be in Cinema 4D R17. Um, you guys can be in any version you really want. Um, there's going to be a few differences in settings and how things are set up, but it shouldn't be too bad. So, as you guys may know, I just released a materials pack. Uh, my last video was all about it, where I showed off my one in the store and I gave you guys a free one. Um, and these are all the materials right here. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this uh, and create these and get different looks. Um, I'm basically going to be showing you how to do sort of like a lava material like this or this. It's not really lava, but it's like dark with a glow, which is kind of like a lava-ish look. Uh, but you, this will kind of show you the fundamentals to create any sort of material. It kind of covers everything um, except showing transparency, which I will just show at the end. But yeah, let's get right into it. So you want to go ahead and create a new material. Double click on it. First thing I usually do is uncheck reflectance or specular, whatever version of Cinema 4D, whatever it says, you just uncheck that. Stick with the color for now. You can always add things as you go. So make sure you have color selected. Go to the drop down menu next to texture and select layer. Now everything will just turn black. You want to click on the black square and this is where we're going to be working from. So the first thing I like to do is add an image or two. So I have a folder here with a bunch of just different textures and things like that. And since I'm going to be creating sort of like a lava-ish material, I'm going to use a rock-ish sort of um, texture. So I'll go with this guy right here. Um, and these are just downloaded randomly that I have. Uh, you could just Google or find textures wherever. Um, going to select no there um, and then I'm going to add another image and these are just a bunch of colorful gradients and things that I have um, so let's find a cool one maybe this one uh, no again and I'm just going to set that to like overlay this will just give it a different color and the color doesn't really matter for now but it gives it different uh, shading so it's a little darker at the bottom and stuff and I'm just going to decrease the opacity now, if you're making other tutorial or other materials, uh, you might want to add more layers, change the settings a little more to get different variations of things, um, stuff like that. But for this, we're just going to keep it pretty simple and just stick with these two textures. Uh, now we're going to go to Effect and we're going to go to Hue, Sat, and Lightness. Um, and we're going to decrease the saturation so it's basically like a gray, something like that. Um, Maybe change the hue to, let's see, maybe we'll work in, we're going to probably go with like a, maybe a pinkish lava, a pinkish bluish purple, sort in that area. So I'm going to go with this uh, purplish blue sort of color. I don't know if you guys can tell that has color, but it has a slight color. Um, and then we're going to go to effect again and go to brightness, contrast, and gamma. Um, let's just bring up the contrast a little bit. We want some dark spots. Um, actually this texture might have be a little too dark. The edges are a little much, so I'm going to bring that down a tad like that. All right. That's pretty cool. We're going to leave it at this for now. We might come back and change stuff. You never know. This is a process of usually adding things and changing things and going back and forth between layers to get the look you like. So I'm going to go ahead, go to that drop down menu again and copy channel because we're going to use this for the, the displacement. So we're going to check displacement and go to the drop down and paste the channel. And you can see it adds that and distorts it and everything. But if I were to drag this on um, our object right now and render it, there would be no displacement on the actual object itself. So we got to check sub polygon displacement. Um, that'll basically do it. Uh, or it might have displacement, but it's not as good. You want to check that. That's how you get the good displacement, the good look. And obviously, if it's too much, you can decrease the height or just decrease the strength, depending. The height just changes like how high or low it like modifies, obviously. But we're going to leave that like that for now until we render out. We might change stuff later. Now we're going to go to the luminance. This is where we get to the actual glow and a sort of essentially the lava effect. And we're going to bring down that drop down menu, go to layer again and get in here. And let's go to image. And I have um, more like glowy textures here that are sort of lava-y. And I don't remember. There was this one I think was the best one. Um, you kind of just need multicolored textures like this. 
And I'm going to open this up. The color doesn't matter, by the way, because you can always change it. Um, so you can see that looks a little bit gross. So let's go ahead and go to Hue. And let's get some cool colors. Maybe something like that. I believe I have a texture with this actual color scheme. Um, so we're going to do something like that. And we're going to have to change the style. So I usually just go through and look for something that looks pretty cool. Um, as you can see, none of these are really changing all that much. So I'm probably just going to stick with the hard light. Hard light's the usual one I go to, but obviously in this case it's not going to work. So I think I'll just keep it at normal. Because um, you can see the dark spots go away anyway, so it's essentially already on screen because of the luminance. Uh, like black obviously won't show up because you can't illuminate that. Um, but yeah, so we'll stick with this. And if you notice, it looks like an awful material up here. Um, it's like a little too white. Um, it's not dark enough like the other materials I showed off down here. Um, like this guy and this guy, you can see they are a lot darker. So to fix that, we want to go to Diffusion. Check that, and we're going to go ahead and paste the channel. So we should still have this texture that we used earlier. And that wasn't um, dark enough for me. It's still a little too light. So I'm going to go into that layer and bring up the contrast just a bit. And that should darken it just a tad. I don't know if it did or not, um, but it should. And that's sort of the look. Um, now maybe I can get a different color scheme. I'm actually going to add a shader. And if you wanted to make everything one color, this is how you do it. You go to shader color. Uh, select your color. Let's go ahead with a, well, we're going to do like a purplish. So let's go ahead and do that. Something along those lines. And let's change that to Q. Mm, maybe color. No, saturation. Doesn't do anything. Stick at hue. And I'm going to actually switch these guys. Bring that there. Bump up the saturation. Uh... It's looking a little funky, not really what I like. Uh, maybe decrease this a little bit. Ah, there we go. That's kind of looking pretty decent. Maybe bump that up, change it. Let's see what we can get. That's not bad. One problem is with this, uh, I don't really like how much of the green and the color there is. I want something like that where it's just a little less. Um, Let's try hard light. Is that it's still going to be a little difficult? Um, I'm going to go ahead and add another image and try to get a different look with a different texture. So I don't think any of these are going to really. Ooh, maybe this one. Let's try this guy. We're just going to bring him down here, and let's remove him, and let's try to put this on hard light. Ooh, that's really good. Um, let's change the hue. Let's get sort of that purplish yeah, it looks a little off um, maybe decreases this is this oh, is this, this doesn't even matter we don't even need this anymore let's go ahead and remove that I kind of like this blue right now that's looking pretty good um, and you can see down here this is this material right here is looking like that so maybe we just go ahead and try to recreate that something like that there we go that's looking pretty good. Um, now let's go ahead and just test this out. We're going to put them on here. Um, in the first test, I always just leave the settings alone, see how it looks. And I think this is going to look pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. That's a good lava texture. You can see it's really dark. Bright spots are bright. Um, obviously, if, you, if that was a little too dark for you, you could take off this diffusion and check it, uh, see how it looks without it. It should look pretty good without it. Um, maybe even better, this is not looking too bad. Uh, actually, yeah, it looks better without the diffusion. Looks a little off though. I love the rounded parts, they get really good looking. The straighter parts don't look too good. Um, let's try to do this, put it on cubic and seamless, the material. So I just selected the material, cubic, seamless. And let's see how that looks. That's These are usually the two settings you use on text with materials. So if they both look fairly good or one of them looks good, that's usually how I know. So you can see that this second one's not looking as good as the first. Um, 
not really surprised with lava materials. I tend to notice they look better with the UVW mapping. Um, so I'm going to stick with that. And let's go back in here. And <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to try to add a little more color to these. So actually, let's add a little bit of distortion. So if you go here to effect and distort, you can add a little bit of distortion to the layer. I don't know what 3D does. I've never tried that. That should be funky. Um, yeah, but let's bump up the strength here. Get some wild looks. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to go add another image. So maybe let's get that one we were using earlier. Open that guy. And we'll put him down here. And let's put him on screen. And let's bump down the opacity. See, you can tell the color's a little off with this guy. Um, ooh, maybe Dodge would look good. That adds like a little bit of purple. If I decrease this, this might be a, a pretty cool look. I'm going to check Diffusion. That should that's going to be a pretty cool looking material. There you go. It's like a little purplish. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too carried away getting too in-depth with showing you guys how to make a material. That's like the basis, basic gist right there. That's kind of the process, the thinking. You want to just keep experimenting and trying things. And if you notice for the my test object, I have this, which is rounded, and these that are straight. You want to have uh, one of both at least so you can see how it looks on different things. Because there are textures, I'd say this one is one of them, where they look better in the rounded part than this straight part. Um, actually, this render, I think this part looks better than that. Uh, but you get, get some cool looks with all the segments in here. Uh, just depends on the font and all that stuff. But if you want to create a font like the this one right here, this paint splatter, or any of these guys that have like transparency, how that would work is you want to go ahead to Alpha, and you want to get a texture... So I'm just going to open up the layer again because that's what I like to do. Um, let's get an image. Um, I don't know if I have any of the ones I use saved here. Actually, I do. I have the spider web, um, but that's not going to be a good example. Oh, here, paint splatter. So you open that up. No, and boom, you get like a paint splatter shape. And let's see what this looks like. Oh, it's already on. We render this guy out. You'll get some transparent transparent bits. Now, if we leave it on this setting, uh, the edges are going to show up too. But if we were to put it on cubic and seamless, uh, it might look a little better. But you can put this over textures so you can have multiple layered textures, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, you can see kind of how it's going to look. But if I wanted to, I could put like this green guy on, put it just ahead of it. And I, oh, that might not work. I'm just going to delete that for now. Um, I'm not 100% sure this will work, but I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, it will. Look, you can get that sort of look. That's kind of what it was intended for. Uh, I should have probably tested that when I was making this material, but I never did. Uh, but yeah, so you get stuff like that. Obviously, this looks awful. These are horrible color combinations. But that's just something you can do. Um, I recommend not going towards uh, using the glow at any point. Unless it's like a solid material like that, like you want to use glow on. It tends to look a little off. I used it, but I, I only use it for like atom array things. Um, so like these, all these guys that look like this have the glow. But if they're on here, <clears throat> they look just a little off. They look better when they're just an atom array. Because it just it's, it's for atom array, really. That's what I use it for. That's why I put it in this pack. Um, I use that in a lot of my tutorials in Cinema 4D and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is the reflectance I rarely use. See, I used it on this these normal materials, but it's not very strong. It's just very subtle. Um, and then the only time I ever really use it is on like metals. Oh, I'm not going too far. So like this guy, and you kind of create like the metal -y look because you need the reflection. That's it. I don't really use it in any other circumstances. It tends to look bad in certain light rooms and things like that. And I just like the matte look in a lot of cases. 
But yeah, guys, I this felt pretty long of a tutorial, but I think that covered most things that I do and the basics to kind of creating materials. Like, you just really want to layer stuff, get a cool look. Um, you can also add shaders, like add noise here, uh, which can substitute for textures and things like that. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like. Um, it would really help me. I love to hit 100 likes. It would be great. Follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy. Subscribe for more videos. Add my Snapchat, which is also Quezzy. I'll keep you guys updated on what I'm working on, what I'm doing. And yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.